Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio and Robert Young in The Gay Sisters. Lee DeMille. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a popular belief that all fame the same way. Just by being born. Then by being a writer. And then merely by... And finally, merely by reaching down to pick up... Barbara Stanwyck was born in Brooklyn, Robert Young in Chicago. But there the resemblance ends. The truth may be less glamorous, but it's more logical. Both our stars and their trade the right way. By serving a hard... In fact, between the two of them, they have about a uh, hundred pictures to their credit. Rob Young has just finished Journey for Margaret at the Metro... And tonight we pick Barbara Lay. It's the thrilling gay sisters. You'll hear Barbara as the heiress to a huge fortune and the courage to give up every cent of it for a principal. And her bitter enemy, played by Bob Young, knows that secret. And there's one secret I wish I knew. How to bring back my hair. <laughs> Short by a good many loyal who are accustomed to taking me at my word. Veronica Lake was telling the audience about a man who bought $180,000 worth of war paint off a lock of mine to anyone who'd buy a 10-cent war stamp. My desk ever since. I have so few hairs to give for I can't back down far as my hair holds out. But from now on, the deal is off. The quality of my hair leaves much rather sell you. There's no doubt at all about the quote always makes good on a... Now for the exciting drama we promised Burton on the first act of The Gay Sisters, starring Bob and Robert Young as Charles Barclay. In 1917, when Fiona Gaylord was eight years old, her father went to war. The night before he left, they sat and spoke together in the library of the family mansion. The land is the Gaylord's religion, Fiona. For 150 years, we have bought land, and we have grown richer and richer. We have gone to Europe, and to Harvard, and to the dogs, but we never sold the land. And now, Fiona, you're the Gaylord who's going to carry on in my place. Always be a Gaylord, Fiona. Never sell the land. For 23 years, Fiona Gaylord has remembered those words. For 23 years, while the Gaylord will was dragged through the courts, she has watched the once great fortune dwindle to almost nothing. But she has held fast. Fiona Gaylord has never sold the land. Proceed, Mr. Gibbon. <clears throat> well, Your Honor, as you know, this is in the matter of the will of the late Ken Gaylord. I am the proponent of that will and the attorney for the Gaylord sisters. Mm, uh, when did Penn Gaylord die? In 1918, Your Honor. Twenty-three years ago? Yes, Your Honor. And you're still trying to get the will probated? Yes, Your Honor. Well, just what has happened in all these 23 years? Well, when Penn Gaylord died, there immediately appeared another will which it is claimed was executed in France. There was naturally a will contest. Well, was there a great difference between the French will and the American will? No, Your Honor, except that under the French will, Penn Gaylord set aside 10% of his estate as a trust fund for a certain charity. It's that charity which is fighting to establish the validity of the French will. And who represents the charity here? It is I who represent that worthy institution, Your Honor. Oh, Mr. Wheeler. Can you tell me something about this charity, please? What is it? It's a settlement house for working boys, the Third Avenue Neighborhood Club. Thank you. Continue, Mr. Gibbon. With the estate tied up by this contest, the three little Gaylord orphans didn't have any money. So we had to make appeals for allowances to enable the orphans to fight this French will, which we claimed and still claim is invalid. And are these the three little orphans? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Fiona Gaylord, Evelyn Gaylord, now Lady Burton, and Miss Susanna Gaylord. Three little kittens who lost their mittens. <laughs> you are Fiona Gaylord? Yes, Your Honor. I assume this one is... Lady Burton, Evelyn Gaylord. I've just returned from England. And this is Susanna the Youngest. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Gibbon, 
Who's been administering the estate all these years? Mr. Van Rensselaer until his death when I became temporary administrator. And this case has been in the courts ever since? It was a very large estate, Your Honor, and there were a great many suits. You will find the record here. This matter of the charity is the last of the contests. Well, since this contest seems to be over 10% of the estate, didn't it ever occur to anyone that it might be settled amicably between the heirs and the charity? Oh, certainly, Your Honor. As a matter of fact, about four years ago, we were on the verge of a settlement when the charity suddenly broke off negotiations. No, it wasn't the charity. It was the one man who wormed himself into the control of the charity, Charles Barkley. It was he who refused to settle. Miss Fiona, please. The Gaylord sisters have always been willing to give to the charity the 10%, and we're willing to do it now. But that's not what they want. They want to prolong this litigation indefinitely. And the man who was behind them is Charles Barkley. If it hadn't been for him, this case would have been settled years ago. I must caution you, Miss Fiona. You'll only complicate the case. Complicated? Oh, don't make me laugh. It's so complicated now, it looks like a dish of spaghetti. <laughs> Just how does Mr. Barkley enter into the litigation? How do you suppose a charitable organization can afford the services of an expensive lawyer like Mr. Wheeler? Only because Mr. Barkley pays the bills. And why does Mr. Barkley pay the bills? Because Mr. Barkley wants to buy the Gaylord Mansion tear it down and erect in its place a hideous monument to his vanity to be known as Barclay Square. And why can't Mr. Barclay buy the Gaylord Mansion? Because it's not part of the estate which is in litigation. I got it direct from my grandmother. It belongs to me, and a Gaylord never sells the land. Your Honor, it embarrasses me that a client of mine should be uh, guilty of such misconduct. As for Mr. Barclay... Why shouldn't he interest himself in this charity the same as he has in so many others? Right. Miss Fiona! Don't wave your hands at me! Your Honor, for over 20 years, this mess has been going on. We've practically grown up in court. I knew what a subpoena was before I could spell cat. The gay sisters, they call us. They've written books about this case and teach it at Harvard. It's an annual performance. The Gaylord Circus is coming to town. And who pays for it? We do. We've been living on our expectations, borrowing on them until the moneylenders pull down their shades when they see us coming. If we can find a butcher who doesn't know us, we can last three months longer. And if the case isn't settled by then, I'm going to give the estate away to save my soul and shout hallelujah. Come on, kids, let's get out of here. Hallelujah! But Miss Fiona, you can't leave the courtroom like oh, this. can't I? Get out of my way. Fiona! Come on, Susanna, don't stop. Fiona, there's Charles Barkley I said don't stop. Oh, which one is he? That man over there. He's coming this way. Keep going, Evelyn. Miss Gaylord, may I speak to you, no. please? No, ring for the elevator, Susanna. Miss Gaylord, just a moment. As unpleasant as this is for both of us, I think you ought to listen to a little common sense. I hate common sense, Mr. Barkley. It's so common. You're starting your case all over again with a new judge. You heard your own attorney say that it may take years to settle the estate. Now, I want to buy the Gaylord house. Over my dead body. If necessary. Mr. Barkley, why are you so set on buying our house? Oh, a whim, Lady Burton. A whim of iron. You'd better persuade your sister to make a deal with me. There'll be very little left for any of you if she keeps on fighting. And I can afford to keep on fighting indefinitely. Fiona, why don't you settle? Shut up. Ring for the elevator again. You'd better get over your stiff-necked pride, Miss Gaylord. You ought to remember there's Barclay pride, too. Where are your grips, Evelyn? Still down at the PR rush right off the building. Miss Gaylord. We'll get a cab and pick them up. In six months, you may have to walk. I've done that before. Going down. Down. Miss Gaylord. Good morning, Mr. Barclay. <laughs> If Saskia ever answered the door inside of ten minutes, I think I'd drop dead. Saskia! Oh, Fiona, the house looks terrible. I thought we had ruins in England, but they've got nothing on this. Oh, wait till you see the inside. We've closed off the east wing to save fuel. Saskia! Oh, for heaven's sake, Saskia, where have you been hiding? I came as soon as I could. We've been standing out there for ages. Take Miss Evelyn's grip. I never get any rest in this house. Never so. Oh, keep quiet. Have there been any calls? A fellow named... Niles again for Miss Susanna. Gig, what did he say, Saskia? I don't know. I couldn't hear good. Hello. What are you doing in here? I left the ball in here. Saskia, I thought I told you to keep this child out in the kitchen with you. I can't help it. I just want to get my ball. Well, get it and get out. Go on, scat, scat. Yes, ma'am. Fiona, you frightened the child. No, I don't. He likes it. Well, who is he, anyhow? Oh, that's Austin. Austin? Have you been adopting children while I've been gone? Mm, he's no trouble. Where'd the little nipper come from? Saskia brought him from the country. He's a relation or something. How old is he, Saskia? I don't know. Don't be so curious, Evelyn. Saskia, is he ready? No, it isn't. 
I didn't have time. I'll give you to... ten minutes to bring tea here. Go on. You have no heart. No, I know. Only a stomach. Well, Evelyn, how does it feel to be back in your old home? Well, at least it smells the same. Mm, like the Gaylord case. Oh, I don't know how you two have stood it, really. Believe me, you get used to it. You've got to get used to it. Well, I'm beginning to wonder if they ever settle cases in this country. I'm going to see our Mr. Gibbon tonight. I'll settle it. Now, what in the name of... Saskia, what's that racket? He's fighting. He's fighting. Who is? What's the matter? Austin, out in the back. A big boy is punching him. Well, why doesn't he punch back? Oh, you've got to stop it. That big boy will kill you. Oh, all right, all right. Get the tea, will you? I'll show you. Won't give me the ball, huh? You let me alone. Let me alone. I'll show you. Austin. Austin. We're scared. Lord. What's the matter with you? He, he's punching me. Oh, why don't you fight back? Punch him in the nose. I, I can't reach him. He's too big. Then kick him in the shin. Go on, kick him. All right, there. Oh. That's it. Give him another one. You want another one? Oh. One more. Go on. Oh, oh. That's it. Good. <laughs> All right, now look up here while I wash off your face. Oh. Stand still. When I, when I first saw you, I thought you was coming to help me. Well, I did help you. I taught you how to fight back. Yeah. If he ever comes here again, I'll knock his block off. Here's the bandages. Oh, Austin, let me see. What have they done now, to now, you? Now, now, don't cluck over him, Saskia. Just tend to your cooking. But he's hurt. He's bleeding. Oh, I can't leave him alone for one tiny minute. Oh, you should see the other guy. Austin's the hero. He is wounded but not slain. He will lay him down and bleed a while, then rise and fight again. How, huh, Austin? Yes, ma'am. How do you like living in the city, Austin? Oh, I like the country better. So did I. <laughs> it's a tough world. You don't learn to get tough living in the country. The cows look too kind. Walking up Fifth Avenue is like walking through a jungle. You mean lions and tigers and wolves? Yeah, with clothes on. <laughs> there you are. You're a new man. You mean I can go out and fight again? Mm, well, not right away. I'd take it easy for a while. What foul concoction are you brewing here, Saskia? Vegetable soup. Well, I never would have guessed it. Well, it has a special vitamins. Not the way you cook it. She, she's swell, ain't she? I like her. She's got no heart, only a stomach. <laughs> Papers ought to be signed tonight, Miss Fiona. I can explain them if you wish. Never mind the papers, Gibbon. If you're in the mood for explaining things, you might explain what you meant by humiliating me in court today. Now, Miss Fiona, you know as well as I that a member of the bar must govern his conduct according to the rules, the ethics of his profession. Rules, ethics, tripe. See here, Gibbon. I don't know what was in that scheming mind of yours when you made that slobbering speech about Charles Barkley, but it wasn't ethics. Well, since you've descended to personalities... No lawyer could sit silent in court while his client made such an undignified and violent attack on a, on a man of Charles Barclay's position and importance. Oh, so that's it. Well, if you're so enamored of Mr. Barclay's noble motives, go and ask him for a job. We can get along without you. Why, you just can't change lawyers overnight in a case like this. Why can't I? It isn't done. Well, it's being done right now. Mm, well, I've right let you pilfer this estate for mm. years, let you hand in your swindling demands for fees. But now you've got all you're going to get out of us. Given you through. Take your dirty red wet face out of here and keep it out. Get out. Very well. Very well. And take your briefcase with you. Fiona, what's happening? Are we being blitzed? No, but Mr. Herschel Gibbon was just blitzed right down the front steps and into the gutter where he belonged. Oh, Fiona, what's all the noise? Is everything all right? Oh, yes, everything's fine, hey, Susanna. sounds like a man's needed here. Would I be any help to three ladies in trouble? I'm not very strong, of course. Who are you? Fiona, this is Gig Niles. This is my sister, Fiona. Hello. Gig Niles. Aren't you that very bad modern artist who smelled up the place painting a picture of Papa? Right, for the Gaylord Post of the Legion. Anyway, you know what you like. Yes. Is he what you like, Susanna? Yes. Hmm. I don't know that I blame her much. I'm the other sister, Mr. Niles. Sure, I know a Gaylord face when I see it. How's England, Lady Burton? Fighting. Evelyn's husband is in it. The RAF. Yes, I've read about him. You don't know what happened I before. fired Gibbon. You fired him? Oh, we'll have to get another lawyer then. Oh, we'll get on. New York's crawling with lawyers. Let me see. Yeah, Ralph Pedlock. He might be just the right man. Why? Years ago, my dog bit him. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, he knew I was a gay lord, and he didn't sue me. <laughs> I'll call him up. Besides, he's supposed to be a good lawyer. Would a good lawyer have anything to do with this family? <laughs> so you're an artist, Miss Niles. 
You don't look like an artist. Oh, you're Lady Burton. Go on. Tell me what I look like. An incendiary bomb with a monocle. <laughs> Excuse me, Lady Burton. Your sister and I were talking about something before and we didn't settle it. Gig, please. Not now. Susanna, when are you going to marry me? Gig, isn't he informal? What about it, Susanna? Well, well, there's something I've got to tell you. Oh, don't worry your silly head about your husband. You know. You knew I was married. I've known all the time. I went to school with a skunk. Sayer Allen, how could a live girl like you marry a fruit plate like that? Well, I, I've tried to get the marriage in Nell, but he wants a great deal of money. I can't pay him until the estate is settled. Suppose I murder him. Oh, no, Gig. I wouldn't like the idea of waiting outside prison. And I don't like waiting any place. Darling, I love you. You know that. Please, You've forgotten Evelyn. No one forgets Evelyn. Uh, look, Evelyn, what's wrong with me? I offered to take a woman away, give her love, life, and everything a woman's supposed to dream of. And what happens? She says no. I wouldn't. Nobody asked you. Hmm. You know, I'd quite forgotten how exciting American men can be. Well, girls, at last I have some good news for well, you. It's about time. What is it? Mr. Pedlock's coming right over. Hooray for the Gaylords. There, you see, I've brought you luck. Did you bring your gas mask, too? Yes. Why? Pedlock's going to need it when he opens up our case. <laughs> We can get this case out of the courts in, let's say, another year. That means you'll take it, Mr. Pedlock? As a lawyer, I'm very happy to get it. Oh, thank you. But there's one thing I want to ask you. Why does Charles Barkley hate you so? I've never understood either. Why does he, Fiona? I don't see that the reason is important. Well, apparently he's the monkey ranch in the buzzsaw. You know, it mightn't be a bad idea if we had a conference with Barkley. No, I won't have it. Fiona, you seem to be almost afraid of Charles Barkley. Why? Afraid? Afraid of that country, Claude Hopper? Me go to him? Why, if Papa were alive, he'd be coming to our house, to the back door, hat in hand. Well, if you feel that way about Barclay, I'll have to see what I can do with Gilbert Wheeler. Maybe I can enlist his sympathies. Who is this Charles Barclay who makes emotions run so high? He's a strange man, stirring big cauldrons and never spilling a drop. He has a brilliant mind, a great organizer. Let's forget it, please. Very well. Oh, by the way, just a word of warning. Don't make Gibbon any more angry than he is already. Yes, I know. He's a bad loser. And after that, Mr. Barclay, I disassociated myself completely from the Gaylord sisters. Yes, I heard they fired you three weeks ago. Well, that's the story they tell, and I haven't denied it. Matter of fact, I've... <laughs> I've leaned over backwards to avoid embarrassing them in any way. I've even waited all this time before coming to you with, uh, with my proposition. Oh, you have a proposition, Mr. Gibbon. I was attorney for the Gaylord Sisters for a good many years. I know a great deal more about the Gaylord Sisters than they suspect. Oh, I have no doubt. Uh, Mr. Barclay, suppose I could give you certain information which would enable you to buy the Gaylord house, tear it down, and complete your Barclay Square project. You have such information, Mr. Gibbon? I have. And you wish to sell me that information, Mr. Gibbon? Well, sell isn't exactly the word. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Gibbon, before we decide on a word, I'd want to be sure that the information was something I could use, legally or ethically. Mr. Barclay, what I know concerns a certain person. If that person found out that you discovered this secret and were in a position to publicize it, that person would do anything to prevent such publicity. It isn't a question of what's legal... It's a chance to make her agree to your terms. Make her agree? Well, naturally, it's uh, one of the sisters. Naturally. But before we discuss it, I'd want to be sure the information is really valuable. But I've just told you. And it can only be valuable if it's something I don't already know. Oh, you couldn't know this, I'm afraid. Why not? Because if you did, you would have used it. Perhaps. Mr. Gibbon, I assume the information you wish to give me is of a somewhat uh, scandalous nature. <laughs> If it weren't, it wouldn't be valuable. You see, Just Mr. Barclay... Just a moment. Does this information concern Fiona Gaylord? Yes, yes, it does. And if you come here to tell me that Fiona Gaylord is the mother of a child... How did you know that? Well, I have ways of finding things out, too, Mr. Gibbons. Do you Gibbon. mean to say you've had this information and you haven't used it? No, not yet. So you see, you've come to tell me something I already know. Good day. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Barclay. After all, you, you owe me something. Well, if you wish to send me a bill for your time wasted, why... Uh, do you know why I'm here? I thought we went over that pretty thoroughly. Oh, no, we haven't. You know the reason I was chucked off the Gaylord case? 
It was because of the way I sprang to your defense in court. Why, surely, Mr. Gibbon, that was your sense of justice speaking. When we do right for right's sake, we should not expect to be rewarded. I don't think there's anything further to discuss, Mr. Gibbon. Now, see here. I'm going to be rather busy for the next hour or two. Good day. Good day, sir. Hello, Wheeler. This is Barkley. Wheeler, I think we'll have to use some information I've been holding out on you. And if we don't, somebody else will, so it doesn't make much difference. It's about Fiona Gaylord. She has a child. Yes, a boy who lives in the house with her. His name is Austin. In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille will present Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Young in Act Two of The Gay Sisters. Now, here's Sally, and looking very perky, too. My, those braids are becoming. Thanks, Mr. Kennedy. It's a new way to do my hair. I got the idea from the screen stars. You know, quite a few of them are wearing their hair braided like this. Paulette Goddard's look simply lovely that way. And Merle Oberon fastens her braids with little bow knots. Well, as both those lovely ladies are always the last word in good grooming, Sally, I guess braids are really high style. Mm-hmm. And it's such an easy hairdo. Green stars are like other busy women these days. Not much time to spend on beauty. But naturally, they want to keep right on looking lovely. Well, Sally, there's an important reason why Lux Soap Complexion Care is more popular than ever with Hollywood stars. Of course. Because... Active lather facials with Lux Soap are quick and easy, and they really work. And that's what every woman has a right to expect of her beauty care nowadays. Sally, won't you describe how simple it is to take a Lux Soap facial? Screen stars do this. They pat that creamy, fragrant Lux Soap lather lightly in. Then they rinse with warm water and follow with just a dash of cool. They pat to dry with a soft towel. Takes just a few moments. But my, how delightfully smooth your skin feels afterwards. Yes, you can be sure that active lather has removed thoroughly stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt. Gentle Lux Toilet Soap gives delicate skin protection it needs. Here's the way any woman can discover for herself what a real difference an active lather facial can make in her skin. Try this Lux Soap Beauty Care every single day for 30 days. Then, look in your mirror and see. Yes, you'll understand why nine out of ten famous Hollywood stars use Lux Toilet Soap regularly for their million-dollar complexions. You can't buy a finer soap at any price. And since this exquisite beauty soap costs but a few cents a cake, why, you owe it to your own precious complexion to try this gentle, cherishing care. Why not get three cakes of Hollywood beauty soap, Lux Toilet Soap, tomorrow? Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Gay Sisters, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Fiona Gaylord and Robert Young as Charles Barclay. Fiona Gaylord is the mother of the boy Austin. For six years, she's kept the secret, confident that a prying world would never know. She stifled the mother instinct, locked it away in her heart forever, except for those times when she and the boy are alone. Austin! Austin, cut it out. Oh, yes, ma'am. What do you think you're doing? I'm an Indian. I'm chasing a deer. Well, how about chasing it outside the library? Yes, ma'am. Come here. You smell of peanuts. Uncle Pete took me to the zoo. We fed the monkey peanuts. And I saw a giraffe. Saw? Yes, ma'am. Sir, we had popcorn and hot drinks and two kinds of ice cream. Uncle Pete thought my muscle. He said it was bigger than an oyster. Oyster? Yes, ma'am. Aunt Evelyn gave me a quarter, but Uncle Pete wouldn't let me spend any. You mean Susanna, don't you? No, I mean Aunt Evelyn. The one who says blind me and calls me Nipper. When did you start this aunt business? It was Uncle Gig. He said it sounded more friendly, like we was relations or something. Am I a relation, Miss Gaylord? Well, yes, you are. 
Miss Gaylord, do people read all the books in this room? No, not if they can help it. What do you like to read, funny? Oh, they ain't. I mean, they're not very good. I used to like them when I was little. But now I like Daniel Boone and Buffalo Bill. I remember Buffalo Bill coming to this house, to this very room. You mean you really saw Buffalo Bill? I not only saw him, he kissed me. Buffalo Bill kissing girls. Well, I was only a little girl. What did he look like? Did he wear his big white hat here in this very room? Yes, he did. And did he really have long white hair down to here? Oh, yes. Oh, I remember it so well. It was a winter day, and Papa, my father, invited a lot of friends for dinner. I was so excited to be allowed to come. I read... Hello, Fiona. Oh, hello, Susanna. Austin and I were just tidying up in here. That's enough, Austin. Run along. Aunt Susanna, Uncle Geek got my muscle. He said it was bigger than an oyster. I mean, oyster. <laughs> well, you learned by your mistakes. That's more than I can say for your mother. Did you know my mother? Yes. Before you were born. Go on, scat, scat. Just a minute. Come in, Mr. Pedlock. Sorry, I telephoned you so late, but I had to see you tonight. What is it? It's something I want to talk to you about. Come into the library. They got me out of bed an hour ago with this letter, telling me something that you, as my client, should have told me first. A letter? It's about a child, a boy who's living here with you. Would you like to read it? No. No, I don't have to read it. Miss Gaylord, I'm your attorney, at least for the present. I must have this whole story, truthfully, from start to finish. Not now, not tonight. Can you be at my office the first thing in the morning? Yes. Very well. Good night, Miss Gaylord. Evelyn, are you asleep? Who's that? Susanna, come in here. Fiona, what kind of an hour sit is it? Sit down and keep quiet. What is you it? You sit down, too. Sister has a bedtime story to tell you. Well, it must be important. It is. You may as well know that we're going to have one choice juicy scandal break over our heads. What kind of a scandal? About Austin's mother. Austin's mother? Well, who is she? I am. You? Well, who's the father? Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley? Oh, no. Oh, I wish you were right. Do you remember when I was 21, I suddenly got my hands on some money? The money that sent you to Europe, Evelyn, and got you married? Yes. And the money that gave you your debut, Susanna. Well, our great aunt Sophronia died and left $100,000 to be given me the day I got married. We were still living like gay lords in those days, and we needed that money. We had to have it. Oh, remember Cousin Willie, the pimply-faced kid who was always crazy about me? <laughs> oh, I do. Well, I thought I could marry him, give him 25000 of the 100000 and call it a day. I made old Van Rensselaer advance me that much, and I started for Vermont. Somewhere along the road, they were building a bridge. I, I didn't notice the paving was still wet, and I started to crawl. Suddenly, somebody yelled at me. Hey! Hey, stop! Where do you think you're going? Woodland. Isn't this the way? Not over this bridge. All right. Hey, you idiot, don't go back over that paving. Not what you've done to my asphalt. You know this is going to hold me up? If I finished in time, I was going to get a bonus. I'm so sorry, really. Well, it's all right, I guess. It's a pretty little bridge. Thanks. Are you the foreman of that gang? No, engineer. Oh. Well, if you could take a few minutes off, would you like to show me the road? Well, I guess you... Sure. <laughs> Thank you. You don't know what a help it would be. I'm sorry I yelled like that was how I met Mr. Barclay. I guess I must have charmed him pretty quickly. He, uh, he had that spaniel look in his eye, the way Snooky used to look when he saw his dinner. <laughs> and I got an idea. Why go chasing all the way upstate after Cousin Willie when I had a much more attractive sap for my purpose closer at hand? I said to myself, he's just a country bumpkin full of romantic ideas. A few days of bucolic lovemaking, a few moonlight nights, and I'll have the ring on one hand and Aunt Sophronia's money in the other. And so you, you married him? Well, it wasn't that easy. I found a place to stay nearby. I, I had to set the stage. I did a good job, too. I picked out a nice moonlight night about a week later and lured him off the porch toward the apple orchard. We walked until I thought he wouldn't have strength enough left to propose. 
So I picked out the biggest and juiciest apple tree and parked myself under it. I knew the great moment at just the right angle. Ellie whispered, I'll never forget this. <laughs> Fiona. Wait till you hear the rest. You got mad with you. How could you do a thing like that? Well, Mom. Yes. But on the night of the wedding, I had a problem. How to get rid of them. Well, he ran out to the village drugstore. The money out of the suitcase, the ring off only, and why? I was too late. Read the note. Yes. Yes. It's $25,000. Yes. Thanks. You're going to let me leave you? Yes. You said you were going to let me leave you and wash you. I am. Listen. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to think. I'll let you know. Darling, spend child as men. Was that so? Grabbed the money, whirled away in a little... I wonder how you found out about it. Well, I don't know. Well, Fiona, what have you done with Austin? Miss Copeland. Our old nurse. Mm. She took Austin as soon as he was... She took Austin as he meant no one else I could trust. I had to come here so that I stumbled. A funny little frighten him. I want to keep him away from me. Maybe I... <laughs> Tell you I'm perfectly willing to accept the boy as my son. Isn't that enough? No, he's not your son. Miss Gaylord. He isn't even my son. Mr. Pedlock, if Miss Fiona Gaylord is still not willing to admit the child is hers, then my client has nothing left to do but go to court. You'll have to prove it first, Mr. Wheeler. We will prove it. In court. After a scandal. Just a moment, Wheeler. Miss Gaylord, this is my last appeal to you. From now on, you'll have to be reasonable. If you aren't, it'll mean ruin for you and your sisters. And in the end, I'll get the boy anyway. Are you leaving now? Yes. Goodbye, Pedlock. Goodbye. Sorry. Fiona, don't do anything mad. Please. Well, Mr. Pedlock, where did all that get us? I don't know. The one ace they hold is the fact that you were married to Charles Barkley. That doesn't mean he can prove he's Austin's father. He doesn't have to. What? The child was born in wedlock, so its parentage cannot be questioned. All he needs to prove is that you are the mother. And we will prove, Your Honor, that Fiona Gaylord is the mother of the child. We have witnesses who will testify that on February the 24th... And we'll She's been going out for several weeks. I knew she was about to have a child. She had no regular... I was called in as physician. On February 24th, the child was born, a boy. The mother gave her name. I was the nurse for Dr. Phillips, and the woman we attended in that case was her, over there, Fiona Gaylord. Put that coat on him, Evelyn. I'll finish packing the grip. Stand still, Austin. Where am I going, Miss Gaylord? You're going away with Aunt Evelyn for a while, up to Uncle Gig's place in the country. Already, Fiona. Good. Charles Barkley thinks he's going to march in here with a court order and take this boy away. I'm going to spoil his pleasure. Once you get Austin out to Gig's place, we're safe. I'm glad you thought of it. <laughs> I hope Gig likes children. He likes me. He's got my muscle. He said it was big as an... Yes, I know, Erster. <laughs> Oyster. Now, listen, Austin. You're going to stay inside unless you're with Uncle Gig. Mm -hmm. And don't tell anyone your name. No, ma'am. You'll have a good time there. Much better than you do here. But I have a good time here. You do? Sure I do. I like it here. Well, that's fine. Fiona, do you suppose that's Barkley? Saskia, don't answer it. Evelyn, take him out the back way. You can get a taxi at the corner. Hurry. Come on, Austin. Goodbye, Miss Gaylord. Goodbye. Miss Gaylord, Saskia says you haven't got a heart, only a stomach. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Now go on. Scat, scat. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come in, Mr. Pedlock. Thank you. I brought Mr. Barkley and Mr. Wheeler with me. Do you mind? Certainly not. Come in, please. Uh, Miss Gaylord. I'll yes. handle this, Wheeler. We have a little bad news for you, Miss Gaylord. Well, bad news is not exactly a novelty to me. Sit down. I have a court order for my son. I've been expecting that. And I've come to take him. I've been expecting that, too. Then you intend to comply with it? Yes. You're going to let me take him? Of course you may take him. If you can find him. Why, where is he? Well, you see, this is a very old house, as you may have noticed. And we're terribly troubled with rats. So there's a man, I believe he's called the Pied Piper of Hamlin. You may have heard of him. And he came here and played a lovely little tune on his pipes. 
and Austin heard him and followed the Pied Piper right out of the house before I could stop them. <laughs> you know how little boys are. Oh, I forgot. You haven't any children. I have a son. Yes? Do you realize that what you're doing constitutes contempt of court, Miss Gaylord? But I'm doing nothing. You know where that child is? No, not at the moment. Edluck, what are you going to do about this? If I may have a few minutes with my client alone... Are you going to tell us where the boy is? I don't know where he is. All right. I came here prepared to be generous. But you've managed to kill that desire, along with every other decent impulse I've ever felt for you. Hate is the thing you thrive on. And if that's what you want, that's what you're going to get. Come on, Wheeler. You know where the child is? Of course I do. Miss Gaylord, I've been very patient with you. And I know by now how useless it is to argue with you. So I'm going to be very frank. I won't be a party to a conspiracy. Either you get that child back here by tomorrow or you get yourself another lawyer. Do you mean that? I do. If you can get another lawyer. And if I can't? If you can't, you'll have to fight it through alone. All right. I'll fight it through alone. Get out. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Young will bring us Act Three of The Gay Sisters. And now, here's a young bride-to-be with a friend who's dropped in to say, Mary, how exciting! Being married at an army camp. Oh, you've been in such a world, though. I, I didn't get a chance to see any of your trousseau things. <laughs> well, goodness, I haven't had time to get very many. They're all in that suitcase there, Betty, if you want to take a peek. Oh, my, but they're lovely. Oh, what stunning lace on these slips. And what really delicious sachet. So delicate. Hmm. It's a familiar perfume. Now, what does it make me think of? <laughs> well, look under that top layer of things. Why, six cakes of Lux toilet soap. Mary, you smart little thing. It's a trick I learned from my college roommate. I always tuck a few cakes of Lux soap in my suitcase or bureau drawer... It gives a lovely clinging fragrance to your nice silk things. And so practical, too, especially if you're traveling. But then you're always sure to have a supply of your beauty soap on hand. Well, Lux girls are clever as well as lovely. They've found an easy, inexpensive sachet in the delightful fragrance of Lux toilet soap. That Lux soap perfume is delicate and flower-like, the kind fastidious women like to use. Just another reason why this luxurious, smooth white soap that nine out of ten screen stars use should be your beauty soap, too. You'll enjoy its creamy, caressing lather, its light, clinging fragrance, and you'll find it costs very little. Get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll bring our stars back to the footlights for some personal questions. But now here's Act Three of The Gay Sisters, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Young. It's evening of the same day. In the cheerless drawing room of the Gaylord Mansion, Fiona and Susanna are waiting for Evelyn's return. Fiona's eyes are blazing as she paces the floor angrily. Charles Barclay standing here so smugly with his court order threatening me, telling me what he's going to do. Well, I'll defy him and the courts. Blast them all to blazes. The moment Evelyn gets she back... She won't be back. What? Evelyn won't be back. Why not? If Gig's there, she won't. Well, what's Gig got to do with it? Oh, Fiona, how could you send Evelyn up there? Give her that chance. How could you, Fiona? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you know she's mad about Gig? Don't you know she's been trying to take him away from me ever since she came here? Gig and Evelyn? Oh, you're crazy. What about Burton? She's never loved her husband. 
She told me herself. And she's been seeing Gig all the time. Well, of course she's seen him. He comes here to the house and he... Oh, how can a nice, sensible girl like you imagine such idiotic things? If anything like that had been going on, I would have seen it. No, you wouldn't see it, Fiona. You'd never see anything that didn't concern you. Your house, your son, your pride. That's all you can see. It's driven you all your life. Well, it's all right for you to sacrifice your own happiness. But you've sacrificed mine, too. All I know is I love you. And I've lost him. Susanna, come here. <laughs> Susanna! Hello? Yes? Evelyn, where are you? I thought you'd started back long ago. It's what? Raining? Well, you're not going to walk back. Or are you? You'll be back in the morning? No, I don't see. If Gig had any sense, he'd chase you out of there. And you needn't take that injured tone with me, Evelyn. I want you to come back right now. Do you hear me? Hello? Hello, operator, I was cut off. I... It's Fiona. Saskia, what is it? It's Fiona. It's Fiona. What's the matter with you? What happened? She's in there. She's on the floor. What are you talking... Miss Susanna, she had a bottle in her hand, this bottle. Let me see that. She's dead. She killed herself. Call a doctor. Call a doctor, quick. <laughs> Susanna, are you all right? Open your eyes, dear. Uh, I'll take another swallow of coffee. That's it. What did you try a thing like that for? Oh, yes, I know. <laughs> well, you won't have to cry anymore. The Gaylord case is finished. Evelyn and Austin came back last night. They came back? Well, I... I went up and got her. Then you're giving in to Charles Barkley? Yes. Oh, Fiona. You're doing this for me. I'm doing it for all of us. But Austin, what about Austin? Everything's going to be all right for everyone. Go to sleep again, darling. Go to sleep. the custody of the child. Does it meet with your approval, Mr. Barclay? Yes. Miss Gaylord? No, this won't do. Won't do? When I agreed to a settlement, I thought, of course, since he's so young, he'd remain with me. I'm entitled to more than that. Just what do you want? Only what the law allows, equal custody. The boy's time will be divided between us, six months with you and six months with me. His schooling, what about that? We'll arrange that between us. And his vacation... With whom does he spend those? Both of us, alternately. Those are small details that can be worked out later. There are no small details in a child's life. Everything's important. So he's to be shuttled back and forth between two people who hate each other. No. No, I went to school with too many children whose parents were divorced not to know what it did to their life. I'm not going to cut that child in two. You can't keep him to yourself. No, but you can. I'll give him up to you. Are you sure you know what you're saying? Quite. If that child is going to begin to have parents, let him begin properly. Right now, he doesn't know he has anyone. If he finds he has a father, he... Well, he'll never miss not having a mother. Is that your decision? My only decision. Let's get this over with. Saskia? Yes, ma'am. Send Austin down immediately with his hat and coat. Austin, come here. Austin, this gentleman is Mr. Charles Barclay. How do you do, Austin? How do you do, sir? Mr. Barclay is going to take you home with him. Why? Well, Mr. Barclay will tell you about everything later. And now, Austin, be a good boy. Yes, ma'am. And do as you're told. Yes, ma'am. Miss Gaylord, when am I coming back? Well, it's not very polite to talk about that when your visit hasn't even begun, is it? 
No, ma'am. Goodbye, Austin. Goodbye, Miss Peter. Now, wait. Yes, ma'am? I, uh... I just want to fix your collar. There. Run along. Well, that's the last of the burgundy. Do you want some champagne, Susanna? Uh, I don't know. Oh, stop thinking. This is a much better idea. You know, for 20 years we've been saying, once the estate is settled, we'll all be happy. Well, the estate is settled, so we sit in the wine cellar and drink it up. Here. Are you happy, Fiona? Oh, deliciously. Oh, I shouldn't have asked that. I know what you must be feeling about Austin. You're sweet, Susanna. You're the soft one of the family. Ah, why should I miss Austin? He's never been part of my life. I, I hardly even know him, and he hardly knows me. He's much better off where he is than with me. Oh, I mean it. No, you don't. I know you. You're so hard and callous and indifferent. But underneath, you're not. You talk of Austin and your wedding as if it, it didn't matter. And all the time, you're eating your heart out. I have no heart. Fiona, I've just discovered something about you. You and me, we're both alike. I've lost Big Niles, and you've lost Charles Ross. Lost him? <laughs> That's right, lost. And don't let me see the tears. Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, we need another drink. Poor Papa Stella. Nothing left of him. Poor oh, Papa's children. Nothing left of them. Fiona. Yes? Fiona, what is love? Love? Love is something you cut out of yourself before it moves in and cuts you apart. Can you walk? Walk? Mm-hmm. That stuff people do on two legs. Oh. I never heard of it. Oh, well, then you stay where you are, and I'll get a blanket. It's cold down here. Fiona. I'll be right back now. Sit tight. Susanna. Who are you? Oh, hello, Jig. Where's Susanna? Where's Susanna? Where's Evelyn? Evelyn's on a plane back to England. I put her on myself. Good. Now, where's Susanna? Is she down there? Uh-huh. She wants to know what love is. Thanks. Go on and tell her. Tell her that love is... Gig, where are you? Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Austin's gone. Austin, you liked it here. You said you did. Feel my muscle, Uncle Gig. It's as big as an earth. I taught you to fight back, didn't I, Austin? I will lay me down and bleed a while and rise and fight again. That's the thing to do. Only I... I'm so tired. But I've got no heart. And you can't get tired without a heart. You can't live without a heart. Fiona. Right here in this very house. Buffalo Bill kissed me. Fiona. Sure he did. Let me fix your collar, Austin. Let me touch your cheek. Yes, once more. Just touch your cheek. Fiona, look at me. What? What are you doing here? Well, the door was open. So Get out of my house. Oh, no, it's my house now. You're getting out. Well, I'll go in the morning. You're going tonight. Now. Oh, and I suppose you're going to carry me. Yes. Oh, let me down. Let me down. Then stop screaming. I'm still your husband. Where am I? Where 
did you bring me? This is my place. I've ordered some breakfast for you. Hungry? You, um, what happened last night? <laughs> well, I brought you here and stuck you under a nice cold shower. Feel better? I'm not sure. You will. Breakfast will be very special. Baked apple, coffee, nice thin pancakes, and Vermont ate maple syrup. Do you remember Vermont? Yes, vaguely. Apple orchard in Vermont. I remember perfect. What are you thinking about? $25,000. Pretty good tip. Pretty good. And you took it. Yes, I married you, didn't I? No, I married you, and I paid you for it in money. Hello. I couldn't sleep very well. Austin. Hello, Austin. Come on in. You scared, What are you doing here? I'm... I'm chasing a deer. Well, I don't think it's very nice to call your mother Miss. My mother? Then we are relations. Oh. Well, I... Oh, I, I was thinking... If Buffalo Bill could kiss girls, I could too, huh? Why, that... That's very handsome of you, Austin. Had your breakfast yet? No, sir. Well, don't you think you better have it now? But I don't Go want it. Go on, Scat. Yes, ma'am. Fiona, I love you. I hate you. Wouldn't have me if I was the last man on earth, would you? No. Good. We can go somewhere from there. I was afraid you might have become indifferent to me. Fiona, I've loved you since the first moment I set eyes on you. I've never stopped. That's why I took Austin. I thought perhaps that where he went, you might follow. <laughs> why I should want to mess up my life with a bad-tempered vixen like you, heaven only knows. Oh, Fiona, why don't you stop fighting me? It's funny. It's very funny. What is, darling? This room, it... It smells just like apple blossoms. Just as long as stars like Barbara Stanwyck and Robert Young are around, we can bring you performances like The Gay Sisters. And they'll turn out just as well. You know, I listen to the Lux Radio Theater every week, C.B., and I keep waiting for the night when a couple of actors will get up here and you'll say, thanks very much, fellas. It was good. It wasn't much good, but you tried. <laughs> Embarrassing moment, C.B. <laughs> well, it can't happen here, Bob. We'd, we'd find out before Monday night. Mm, I have seen you involved in a very embarrassing moment, though, C.B., Remember that scene in Union Pacific where I was supposed to tip over a big iron stove and I complained that it was too heavy? Well, uh, you, you just finished telling me a minute before that you played tackle on a football team in Brooklyn at the age of eight, so I figured you were pretty strong. Uh-huh. So I tried and couldn't budget. You said, I'll show you how. Then you gave it the old Samson touch. Pushed it right over, huh? Didn't move an inch. Oh. <laughs> well, how could I know it was bolted to the floor? <laughs> Those things happen to everybody, including you, Bob. Oh, sure. I'll never forget the time my wife's great aunt came out to visit us. I never met her, and she was a little doubtful about actors in general, so my wife described my so-called good qualities at some length. She just about sold me as an acceptable relative when my five-year-old daughter fixed it up good. She piped up with, uh, I don't know about all those things Mother's telling you, but Daddy sure is cross as a bear when he gets up in the morning. <laughs> By the way, uh... What was that about you playing on a football team, Barbara? Uh-huh. When I was eight years old, Bob, in Flatbush. You know, where the Brooklyn Dodgers are. <laughs> Who doesn't? I'll bet you were the prettiest tackle Brooklyn ever had. No doubt of that. You must have a beauty secret, Barbara. If I have any, it's just soap and water, C.B. But the kind of soap is very important. It's got to be Lux soap. I've always used it. Oh, by the way, I hope it's all right to mention that here. Well, yes, yes, yes. As long as it's you and... As long as it's luck soap. What play are you producing next week, C.B.? A double-barrel hit, Bob, that scored a success first on Broadway and then on the screen. The name of the play is Broadway, and the stars are George Raff, Lloyd Nolan, and Janet Blair. This is a roaring drama of the Great White Way during the 1920s, with all the thrills of the most famous street in the world in one three-act play. And we have two stars from the Universal Picture, George Raft and Janet Blair, plus Lloyd Nolan. Broadway is a real thriller, T.B., 
I'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. The day sisters supply the day hour for us. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents George Raff, Lloyd Nolan, and Janet Blair in Broadway. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Barbara Stanwyck is now filming The G-String Murders, a Hans Stromberg production. Heard in tonight's play were Bobby Larson as Austin, Lois Collier as Susanna, Dorothy Lovett as Evelyn, Leo Cleary as Gibbon, Fred Mackay as Gig, Griff Barnett as Pedlock, and Noreen Gamil, Boyd Davis, Joe Latham, Paul Langdon, Jane Bierce, and Joe Panario. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear George Raft, Lloyd Nolan, and Janet Blair in Broadway. Want to feel like a million? Try Vim, the new vitamin mineral tablet. If you're vitamin-starved, VIMS will help you build up resistance to colds and safeguard your energy. VIMS match the six vitamin formula doctors endorse, and they meet U.S. government standards, too. So get that VIMS feeling. V.I. for vitamins, double M.S. for minerals. VIMS. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.